new dreams new melodies new kinds of anointing new mantles I'm pouring out new things all over all over can't you feel it don't miss the way don't miss me don't miss my moving Listen, cause I'm doing a new thing A new thing I'm doing a new thing Don't you miss me I'm doing a new thing New thing I'm doing a new thing don't you miss me? Sing it, sing it, sir. I'm doing a new thing. A new, a new thing. Oh, hey, I'm doing a new yes, thing. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Don't you miss hear him, me? Hear him. I'm doing I'm a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Hey, a new thing. Said I'm doing a new thing. Oh, no. Making ways that's 
on, I say, hell, ma. Doesn't matter if they're talking about you. You've been made new. All things are passed away. You are new. Receive your new, new, new. Receive your new, new, new. Embrace your new, new, new. Embrace your new, new, new. Now open up your mouth and give Him glory for your new things. Woo! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth and give Him glory for the new things. For the things you haven't seen yet. For the things that no one has put their mouth on. For the things that no one has put their hands on. Open up your mouth and thank Him for the new things. They belong to you. Woo! Yeah. Belong to you. Hello, City family. This is Apostle O'Neill Salmon from the City of Restoration. Welcome once again to the Core Experience. To all our guests, both locally, nationally, and internationally, we say to you likewise, welcome. If you are in fact here for the first time, we ask that you simply go ahead and let us know what city, state, and even perhaps what country you're connecting from. So just go ahead and do that now. You can do that in the comment section or even the chat section of this particular broadcast. I'm so delighted to have you here with us. And so on behalf of my wife and I and our ministry staff here at the City of Restoration in Valrico, Florida, we say welcome, welcome. Now, weekly, we do broadcast uh, our Bible studies at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so if you ever want to check it out live, should you be watching this on replay, that is the time to make your connection. And of course, once you subscribe or you follow our social platforms, you'll be notified uh, concerning future releases as such as this one. All right. With that being said, I want to also um, give you an opportunity right now to sow, to sow. We know it is better to give than it is to receive, praise God. And we believe that, in fact, your seed praise God, produces a harvest. And so I do believe that we have no, no qualms about wanting to receive a harvest. And so to that end, let's first plant a seed. And so I challenge you this evening to plant a seed, knowing that in turn, you're planting it into good ground. By reason, um, we are able to continue to offer a broadcast such as this. We're able to in turn continue in our ministry endeavors. We're also able to feed countless hundreds, of, praise God, right now, thousands of individuals on a monthly basis because of your sacrifice. So I welcome you to do so right now so that we can continue to do ministry here at the city. Thank you so much. Um, right off the bat, a number of ways you can do so will be shared here on screen as to how you can do that. Also, there will be a number at some point provided to you on another way in which you can connect using the Remind app or that feature on your phone. So we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity, everyone in turn has an opportunity to remain connected to what we're doing here. Listen, we started just last week with a fresh series on midweek services, uh, such as this one. Um, it was previously entitled Spiritual Wellness or Spiritual Wholeness. We're recapping, revamping rather, uh, that, and we're calling it a spiritual reset because I truly believe that we're in a season right now where we are having to reset some things. Um, in other words, we're putting our house uh, together again. We're looking back over things that we've perhaps done in, in the past and questioning in turn, should we be following suit? Uh, today, perhaps we need a new directive. And so right now we're opening our minds and our hearts to what the Lord has for us. Uh, can I pray before we get into the word of God? Now you're going to need your Bible. You perhaps need something to write with and of course something to write on. So I want to challenge you right off the bat to go ahead and get that in hand. Uh, but before we break bread together, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for those that are connected right now. I believe, God, that your word is quick and powerful. And so today, Lord Jesus, oh God, I pray that you would cause us to draw even nigh unto you in closeness to your word and bring that word into our heart. We thank you right now for every hearer, and I pray that our ears be open now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I promise you, you do not want to miss not one 
Praise God. Not one video or one segment of this entire series. It's going to help you spiritually reset. Last week, we talked about that of how well do you hear. Today, we're going to talk about how well do you read. You know, so let's talk about it. Um, let's just dive right in. Um, I'm going to start with a particular text out of Psalm, the book of Psalm, Psalm 119, in fact. Uh, written mostly by David, the psalmist David, but there is a particular verse here or particular verses here in Psalm 119 that leap off the page when it comes to that of our reading and comprehending what God is saying when we in turn read and what are the benefits, in fact, to reading God's word. We want to explore that. Now, um, I, I've, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Before I go any further, I must suggest that after this broadcast that you join us, we are actually going to be doing something unique going forward right after this broadcast at about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to be connecting via the Zoom, um, Zoom feature, Zoom app for those that want to have a further discussion, interactive discussion, that is, we want to invite you to be a part of that. It's going to be fantastic. I promise you, you don't want to miss that one. It's coming up right after right after this session here ends uh, in that. Now, there will be a link that is provided to you um, in the description, so you don't have to leave this broadcast to go back to your phones and quest an intern, how am I going to connect? And you can do so. Now, guess what? It's only gonna be up for that of about 30 minutes. So after that time, um, we're, we're the parking lot discussion is closed. That's what we're calling it. And then we're moving on with the evening. So just wanna make sure that you are aware of that. Um, perhaps I uh, would be remiss in saying it at the end. Um, uh, so I don't want to leave anyone out. All right. Psalm 119 um, says a number of things. Uh, the first scripture that I or verse rather that I want to read comes from verse one, where it says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the world of the Lord. That is blessed are they that keep his testimonies, verse two, and that seek him with their whole heart. You know, um, when I hear the word blessed or blessed, as we so often read it, I look to see thereafter, what is it that deems me blessed? And I recognize here in this particular scripture, it is saying to they that which keep their his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. That's conditional. So for my blessing to be mine, I must seek him in his word, and I must seek after his heart. And so that solidifies right away, <laughs> praise God, the importance of embracing the word of God. There are many verses in this one chapter alone, praise God, that speak to the, the value of God's word. If I go to that of uh, verse 28, same chapter, verse 28, the Bible says, my soul melteth for heaviness, strengthen thou me according to thy word. So here, by reason, life has a way of getting down on any and all of us. And in turn, it is the word of God that empowers us, equips us, and gives us that strength to continue on. If I were to take another verse out of this particular chapter, I would jump to verse 89, where it says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. My God, when I heard that, I began to really think on the fact that God's word is settled. It's already done. It's already settled. There's no question about it. And in turn, I want to be, I need the confidence to be able to walk according to his word and bank on it. Whatever he says, he shall do. And so I'm, I'm grateful for the word of God in that alone. Here's another scripture or verse rather, verse 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than the honey to my mouth. You know, the word of God is not just quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, but it also sweet. What a wonderful thing it is to be able to have the word of God, praise God, being brought into your spirit, into your hearing and your understanding. And so it's essential that you, you develop an appetite, praise God, for the word of God. Do not allow the taste of the word to be dissipated or to, uh, to not be apparent in your life. So by reason, we indulge in the word daily. Now, 
one last scripture, and I quote this one quite often. It is actually verse 105. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So if ever I find myself in darkness, perhaps even leery or unawares as to which direction I am to take, guess what? The word of God oftentimes brings me back on course and gives me clarity concerning what is ahead of me. So I want to challenge you as we embrace the word and the teaching today. And I only have a few minutes because right behind this, like I mentioned before, there's the parking lot virtual discussion that we want to entertain. So I want to give you some nuggets to consider and, and some things that are really of essential value when, it cons when we consider resetting our ability to comprehend the word of God. Now, there are those who, in part, never read the word of God. The Bible talks about this in his word, that there are those that never read, or those who read sparingly, or those who read even selectively. Uh, there is a detriment to um, doing either of such. If you consider your dietary needs, if you consider the fact that should you never eat, you will eventually wither and die. And then there are those that sparingly eat, you know, oftentimes lending to sickness um, down, you know, somewhere in their life, or they are lacking the strength um, in times of necessity. Then there are those that are selective in what they eat. Not that we shouldn't be mindful of what we eat, but we can become, in, an, in our culture, we like to say picky, oh, praise God. But there are some that are selective to the degree where they are very much choosy about what they eat in turn, and, sometimes, and so often missing the essentials. You know, when it comes to the word, how we can correlate that to the word is there are some that would rather read the new and not the old, or rather read the old and not the new, or they will take particular scriptures and apply it to their lives while dismissing several others. Now, we have to take the word of God in its entirety. And so I want you to be challenged in that. Um, I also want you to be mindful because there are those who read the word defensively. In other words, when the word is being spoken or coming to them, they already want to prove the wrong in what you are saying or the wrong in interpretation of that word. They are looking to argue uh, with the word and they're argumentative of, at best over what was meant in turn. The question in turn, what is the spirit riven to you? And more importantly, concerning you now as we commit to this spiritual reset. Then there are those who read, of course, regularly, like any of us and most of us in turn, we are given to a regular diet. Now, I'm not speaking in concept, in context to how often we eat or what we choose to eat, but there are those that eat regularly. Now, I want to challenge you as a believer, whether mature or perhaps at the beginning, a newborn in Christ, um, to con create or even for some maintain a regular diet of the word of God, taking in the word daily. Um, I think it's, vi it's vital and it's essential for all of us to do so. Now, there are many importance behind read and it's where I want to really dive into um, so that we are not lost with the time. Number one, make a note of this, please. This is important. Number one, God's word, watch this, leads us to salvation. God's word leads us to salvation. We'll be discussing some of these points later in the parking lot discussion. All right. So I made a note of that. God's word leads us to discussion, um, to salvation rather. It is written in the word of God that we are saved when we put our hope in him. This is what the word tells us. Even if you are already a believer, rereading the words reminds us in part that God gave his only begotten son for our sake. Amen. Amen. And so I want to challenge you to read the word of God so that you can have the directions that you should take so that you do not go astray, praise God, but you remain saved as you have chosen Christ or Christ has chosen you. And so it leads us to salvation. John 3, 16 reminds us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Had you not read the word of God, you would not have known the sacrifice in turn that he made for you and I. So the word of God leads us to salvation. You know, if you in turn are ministering perhaps to someone in part that does not know Christ, guess what? You cannot do so on your own account by your own words, but you have to introduce them to the word of God. It is the word of God, the Bible says, that brings light, especially to darkness. 
and to dark places in one's life. And so we want to engage that individual, the non-believer or the unbeliever alike, praise God, with the word of God so that they too can come to a place of being saved and being able to testify on, on uh, their own account. Now, the second benefit behind God's word, believers, it provides instructions. Now, we read Psalm 119, 105, that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want you to regard that as through the word of God that we're given our instructions, our instructions for life, instructions for our household, how we treat others. It's the word of God that causes us to even know how to act or even react to situations as they occur in our life. In, in fact, Proverbs 16, verse 20 tells us this, whoever gives heed to instruction prospers and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Again, how vital it is to be able to allow our ears to hear the word of God continually so that we be instructed in wise counsel by the spirit of the God, which comes through the word of God. You know, in the beginning, the Bible says he was the word, right? That he is the word. He's the embodiment of the word. His word and who he is, is not separate one from another. He is the word in the beginning was God was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It's all in the same. And so I want you to regard that if you say you love God, you cannot love God outside of his word. You need his word in part to understand even how to love him. Oh my God, that's powerful. All right, here's number three. We gain wisdom from it. One of the reasons we read the word of God is because it provides us daily wisdom, not just daily nuggets, but it gives us wisdom concerning our times, the times that we're living in. Hence why many can find themselves at peace with what's transpiring in and around them and not given so much to the anxieties and the frustrations and the battles and the differences or indifferences that exist in the world. Because the, the word of God brings about a certain level of wisdom and it is out of that wisdom that we oftentimes ourselves find ourselves rather governing ourselves differently. Psalm 119, we just read that, but 130, just a few more verses down in 130, that's verse 130, the Bible says, the unfolding of your words give life, or gives light rather, it gives understanding even to the simple. Woo, that's powerful to me. That's powerful to me. I pray that this some this is resonating with you because so often the enemy would have us rather to refrain from reading the word of God or we get weary in doing so. Praise God. And and we miss oh my God, the opportunity to have that fresh download that um and then you know in prayer we are oftentimes asking God for direction, Lord, show me this, show me how, lead me, let me not go astray. But it's the word of God that allows all that is in darkness to be brought into the open. Now Here's the number four. Here's the next point that I want to make. And I'm being clear about this because it's going to be a part of our discussion later. Scripture releases our chains and lifts even our burdens. The word of God has the power, believers. I want you to hear me on this. It has the power to release you from whatever chains, from whatever vestiges, from whatever bondages, from whatever burdens you carry. It is the word of God. We've been in Psalm 119, and I promise you, you don't want to overlook this particular um, chapter. In fact, it is the longest chapter, praise God, in the entirety of the word of God. So I want to challenge you in part to read this um, and make it perhaps as a point to study such um, because there's so much value in it. But Psalm 119 verse 28 says, my soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me according to your word. Again, strengthen me. Lord, I know that I'm weak. I know that I'm dealing with situations. I know that I'm dealing with circumstances. There are only but some, so many things that a song or worship in part can do, <laughs> praise God, but it is the word that keeps us from falling. My God, it is the word that is strengthening us even in our matters of our lives. Amen. Here's number five. God's word brings us joy. God's word has the ability and the, oh God, and the power to bring us joy. In fact, Psalm 119, here we go again. Here we go again. Psalm 119 verse 111 says, I have inherited your testimonies forever, for they are joy to my heart. My God, 
It is that which allows for us, again, believers, to maintain, you know, this joy that I have, the songwriter once said, this, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Well, where did it come from? It comes from knowing the word of God, the word of God. It is quick and powerful. The word of God, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's the word of God that's causing us to remain fortified when everything is breaking down and falling apart. Praise God. It's the word of God. Hence why we got to reset our, our liking to our, the, 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 and, and get back into the word of God. If we ever need the word, praise God, if there was ever a time we didn't the word, surely we need it now more than we've ever done in times past because the circumstances of this life, the situations are more often around us while they may look dim, <laughs> or dim and bleak, praise God, it's the word of God that's going to keep you, praise God, from a place of depression, keep you from a place of oppression, keep you from a place whereby you're in despair continually it is the word of God that oftentimes lifts your heart and blesses your soul well. Here's number next. Number six, the Bible, the word of God gives us hope. I think we know that in turn, but oftentimes when you're going through life and you're going through circumstances in part, the enemy again has a way of deterring us from the word of God. And so we start looking down or we see, we see more pessimistic than optimistic. Praise God. We look more negative at the at life and the bleakness and, and uh, the, the, the things that we're insecure about become verbalized and articulated even in a matter of our actions and our words. And if we're not careful, Praise God, we have what we say. Praise God, because death and life remains on the power of the tongue. And so we have to be mindful. Imagine where the word of God is introduced into our hearts. Praise God, and it germinates and it comes now through our tongue. Praise God, it brings about hope even to the hearer in turn. Romans chapter 15 verse 4 tells us, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction. I want you to hear that again. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through encouragement, the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. It's the word that brings us hope. Hence why there are so much material. There's so many self-help books, praise God, that are out there. There's so many books of inspiration in turn that take their material from the Bible itself, praise God, to introduce the, the revelation, the revelatory power of God's word to the hearer. And it encourages your heart well. It's the word of God that brings that hope to all of us. Here's number seven. And I'm going to load you up today because I'm telling you the word of God is more essential. Praise God. If it was a person, we'd call it an essential worker. Praise God. But because it is, guess what? There is not just the word. There's the spirit behind the word. This is what God gave me as I began to really study. And if you fail to make note of anything else, make a note of this. You will breed what you read. You will breed, B-E-B-R-E-E-D, breed, like a like puppies breed or, or animals breed, praise God. You will breed what you read. In other words, you will produce what you read. In part, we've got to filter out all the junk from that which has been brought to us through our ear and our eye gates, uh, praise God, and even what we've downloaded in our minds, the words that we've read and entertained in part, we've got to consider what goes in because we will breed. The word like uh, likewise mirrors it in this way, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Imagine in turn, if you get the word in, I like to say word in, word up, word in, word out. And so you've got to entertain the word of God more than you have done in times past if you are going to manage the spiritual reset and also remain on the path that God has chosen for you. So here's number seven. It reminds us, believers, of his promises. There are so many promises that God has for you, and we know they are yea and amen. But did you know the word of God has a promise attached to it concerning you? Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God who never lies promised before the ages began. Again, the word of God speaks concerning such today, and it is for you and I. Here's number eight. The word. Somebody say the word. The word of God enables us to battle, watch this, and defeat the devil. It not only allows us to be able to go into battle and come out successful, praise God, but there's a defeat 
It's final. It's complete. It is the word of God. It is quick and powerful. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'll give you one more scripture. Matthew chapter 4 verse 3 through 4 says, the tempter came to him and said, if thou be the son of God, this is now Christ here in the wilderness, and he speaks to him. That's Satan now, praise God, tempting Christ. Watch this. He says, if thou be the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus, catch this, answered and said with the word, it is written. You got to know the word. It is written. I'll say it again. You got to know the word. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Praise God. But on every word that comes out of the mouth of God, it is vital that you have the word of God in your heart. It is vital that you have the the word of God in your spirit, in your soul, man, because the enemy will come to tempt you and persuade you otherwise to go away from your convictions, do away with the foundation God has built to challenge you in the area of your ignorance even. And so you've got to know the word, baby, you got to know the word for yourself. If never before have you entertained a study plan, I challenge you to do that. I'll move along real quickly because we don't have a whole lot of time and I can't wait to get to the parking lot virtual discussion tonight. Be there in the room with me, all right? I'm 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here's number nine. Your faith will be strengthened. Your faith will be strengthened. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. Go there with me. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. Hearing by what again? The word of God. Faith comes by hearing. My God, that's why we need the word of God, so that our faith can grow. If you find yourself doubting, if you find yourself in disbelief, praise God. If you find yourself questioning, will God do what did God say? You need the word of God to affirm you. So the spirit of God in the word of God can speak to your hearts and your soul and your mind. And it's through the word of God that we grow in faith. My God, oh my God. So no one in part, no family member, no preacher, praise God, no person in turn can really help you build your faith now. Now, I, I, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put a caveat and an asterisk on that, praise God. If there was no preacher, praise God, most of us would never hear the word of God. The word of God through the preacher, the teacher, the gifts of the body of Christ, praise God, allow us to be able to entertain and form an understanding of the word. But imagine in part, if you only allow for their word into her to be transcribed to you. How do you know concretely that what they're saying is truth? And more importantly, watch this, there will be a time and there could come a time whereby they're not found or available as many churches have experienced a shutdown in the season. Where will your faith be? Praise God. The reality is this, and this is truth. And if I'm saying truth, somebody put it in the word truth, hashtag truth. Let me say it. Here's the word. Most of us didn't know where we were in our spiritual walk until this matter of the pandemic a pandemic rather transpired. If it hadn't been for COVID, most of us wouldn't have not recognized just that, watch this, that we needed to maintain our own spiritual walk. We needed to have our own song. We needed to have our own dance, our own worship, and we needed a relationship with God. The truth of the matter is the word is what's going to keep us while, watch this, while we may at times feel like we can't even keep ourselves together. It's the word of God that's going to bring strength strength to your faith. Here's one more scripture. But again, I'll move on. One more, one more point. Number 10, number 10. I've only got 15 and I'm going to bring this thing home. Here's number 10. You will enjoy a greater fellowship with God through the word of God. You know, just spending time in the word, praise God, allows for you to be able to understand his love towards you. Imagine in part that you have friends and you have family members in turn that you never speak to or they seldom ever speak to you. Eventually that relationship wanes and perhaps even dissipates altogether. But when we entertain the word of God, we have communion. We have fellowship with God. It's called quality time, QT time. It's called 
quality time. Quality time brings a strengthening to that relationship. So we need opportunity to strengthen our relationship with God. And you cannot do so without going into the word of God for yourself. That is why I can't wait. Shameless plug again for the discussion later, because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to talk word. Praise God, because I believe there's somebody right now with a kingdom mindset, somebody right now that's saying, you know, Lord, I need an opportunity to share what revelation or better yet to receive revelation concerning what I've read. Praise God. And I need an opportunity just to share my thoughts on the matter and to empower. Iron sharpeneth iron. Hence why we're going into the parking lot this evening. Now, First John chapter one, verse three, first John chapter one, verse three says what we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim also so that we, oh God, we may have fellowship. So the word of God allows us to have fellowship with God. Here's number 11. Number 11, praise God, your prayers will be heard. <laughs> praise God. Your prayers will be heard by reason of the word of God. Praise God. Praying with and even over scripture is incredibly effective. And sometimes it even gives us, catch this, sometimes it even gives us the words when our own mind and heart fail us. I don't know if you've ever taken an opportunity to pray the word of God. I promise you, this season of your life, let us pray the word of God together. In fact, here comes in November, starting November 1st, for the entirety of November, we're doing, uh, uh, we put an emphasis particularly um, on being thankful, being grateful. And so a, on a daily basis, scriptures, um, along with a word of encouragement, is going to go out to our church family. Amen. Information, again, will be on screen on how you can connect to receive that. But guess what? We're going to be piping information, pushing information to them on how, uh, uh, you know, to pray and pray in agreement with the word of God. Scriptures that they can ponder and reflect on even throughout their day. We're taking the word of God in and we're fasting. Come in this. Oh, my God. Starting on November 1st, we're fasting for 21 days, yo. Listen, it's going down at the core experience. You don't want to miss it. Shameless plug. I know I'm doing a whole lot today, but I want you to get excited because I'm excited about this reset. I'm excited about reconnecting, reaffirming, rebuilding, revamping. There's something, praise God, to be excited about. And I'm excited. And I want you to get along. Uh, praise God. Be excited with me. Psalm 37 verse 4. Psalm 37 verse 4 says this, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Praise God. I delight myself when I take the word of God and I bring it into my heart. Praise God. And I can rejoice over it, knowing that he that keepeth me does not slumber, not sleep. So I don't need to leave sleep because he's keeping me and he keeps all that concerns me. Praise God. The Bible tells me he's concerned about his children. So I don't have to be overly anxious. Praise God. Or, or filled with anxiety because I know he's concerned about me thinking. Praise God. He said, I know the thoughts I have concerning thee, Father to prosper you. So I don't have to worry about whether or not his agenda concerning me is to bless me, to keep me. What? I know the word of God. And because I know the word of God, I can delight in his word. I can delight in my relationship with him. Watch this number 12. And I've got what three more and only about five minutes before I got to close this thing. You will develop spiritually when you endure and engage the word of God. There is a development that happens spiritually, spiritually. Watch this. Ephesians chapter six, verse 17. Ephesians 6 verse 17 says this, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the word of God. You may hear the voice of God, hearing God in his own voice while reading scripture helps us to discern when he is speaking with us at other times. Oh my God. If you want to mature in God, you've got to embrace the word of God. It's the word of God that brings us from level to level, the word of God. Hence why the opportunity to come into the body of Christ, come into fellowship with like saints, come under the preach word of God allows us to grow in God. Hence why we cannot refute the power of the church and the necessity of fellowship. 
Hence why we cannot this, oh God, this, uh, uh, this uh, unplug. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why we cannot unplug from the cistern that is pouring into us. So in part, because it's vital for our development. Praise God. Here's number 13, y'all. Number 13, praise God. Uh, um, 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 oh, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's my notes. All right. You will mature in the things of God. By reason of the word of God, you will mature in the things of God. Learning more about him and his commandments oftentimes matures us as believers. You know, Hebrews chapter 5, 13 and 14 tells us, for everyone who loves milk is unskilled in the word of, of righteousness since he is a child. But Solid food is belongs to those that are mature and can discern. Praise God. I want you to regard that while you take in the word of God, it allows for us to mature in the things of God. Imagine when in turn we get the word in us, how much more we are growing. Praise God. You can oftentimes, my God, this uh, uh, distinguish and make a, uh, a distinguishment between those that are in a place of immaturity. You can make a conclusion rather. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A conclusion between those that are matured in Christ and those that are in a place of immaturity in Christ, not by how much word they know, but how they apply that word in their lives. You see, the word applied allows us to mature. In other words, the word that we associate with, the word that we glean from the word that we allow to watch is produce or harvest in us oftentimes brings us to a greater place of maturity. If you think of a, a tree right now, oftentimes we can see trees with berries and fruit hanging from the limb, but just because it's there doesn't mean the fruit or the berry is mature. Praise God. It's so often by the touch, sometimes by the smell. So often it's not even until you slice it open. Praise God. In other words, it's not until so many times, so many of us are cut or even hurt that we recognize whether or not we really were where we needed to be in the first place. So it's the word of God that allows us, hence why the word of God has to be continually poured into the soil, continue to be built into our foundation so that guess what? We get the nutrients of that word. Oh my God, the nutrients, the benefits of that word, the protein of that word. Praise God, there is value in the word of God. I've only got two more y'all and I gotta pray because I can't wait for the parking lot discussion. Here's number 14. You will be more prosperous and successful, praise God, as you learn what God has taught you in the word of God. You will be more prosperous and much more successful. Psalm 1, verse 2 and 3. Psalm 1, verse 2 and 3 says, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate, what? Day and night. He is like a tree planted by what? By the, and, 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 by, by, what? By, by the streams of water and ye his fruit in its season. It leaves, does not wither, and whatsoever he does prospers. That's what the word of God says. So we have to read of the word of God in order to prosper in the kingdom of God. The word of God is what brings the prosperity, it brings the revelation, the understanding, the comprehension. It brings us into greater levels, praise God, greater dimensions with God. Imagine after the pandemic, if in part we studied and if our fasting led us to the word of God, imagine if in part we studied to show ourselves approved. Imagine in part, if we consecrated ourselves for the next 21 days, just ye yielding and gleaning from the word of God, how much more would be off us or be called upon or placed on us in turn? Praise God, because now we can handle it. Oh my God, there's a sweet aroma coming out of somebody right now because they're taking and accepting that channel challenge right now to read the word of God with the intent to glean from the word of God. Here's number 15, y'all. You learn to fear the Lord. We know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom rather. Praise God, it is necessary. Deuteronomy 17 verse 19. Deuteronomy 17, verse 19, the Bible says, and it shall be with him, and he shall read it in all the days of his life, that he may learn the fear of the Lord, his God, by keeping all the words of the laws and the statutes and doing them. Praise God. You will learn, and I shall learn how to fear God, how to reverence, in other words, God, by reason of the word of God. Guess what, folks? I'm here at the end of this particular teaching. I pray some aspect of this motivated you in turn to 
get into the presence of God. When you read believers, I want you to read regularly. Number one, read regularly as best as you can. Set some time aside, whether 15 minutes, perhaps 30 or even 60. Praise God. Set some time, significant time away each day. Make it a regular part. As you eat naturally, eat spiritually. My God, let's be practical about it. Get into the bathroom and, you know, wait, wait, maybe right there on the throne. Praise God. Y'all know what you do. Instead of picking up your phone, pick up a Bible. P place one there already. Or better yet, perhaps while you're you're waiting for something to be completed on the stove or in the microwave, get to the scriptures at that point. In between commercials, get to it. Whatever place. But make sure it's a part of your regular routine to engage and indulge in the Word of God. Here's number next. Do so devotionally. Now, I'm saying devotionally. That case, it's a different um, approach. It takes a portion of worship, you know, perhaps, you know, as you read the word of God, consider praying the word of God, consider, you know, um, celebrating the word of God. You know, as I'm reading this word, there are aspects of my understanding that's coming alive and I just want to be grateful and thankful. And so that's an opportunity for you to remain devotional in the word of God. Um, here's number three. You know, read with the intent, read with an intent to learn, to glean. You know, um, so often we have Bible plans that give us particular topical readings. Perhaps that's the way you need to engage it. Um, that's fine. You know, maybe you're looking for answers. Maybe you're looking for directions. You know, there is a index in the Bible, praise God. And you can find that more often at the end of uh, the, the, the physical Bible. So often, if you're using an app, it may even provide you some guidance on that. And again, topical reading is not uh, something that we're against. In fact, more often, I encourage it because it allows us to really hone in on what we're concerned about or have a palette for in the moment. So read with some intent. Also, read and mark out the scriptures. Mark out the scriptures. I can't tell you how many times, and I use the, you know, the, 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 the old school way when I'm studying, when I'm, you know, inclined to read it more often. Why? Because I get to highlight. I don't know if the camera picks this all up, but I have several places which I have charted notes. I've even got sticky notes all in here. Praise God of things that I've, you know, taken thought of over the years. Praise God. They're in several places. I've even gone to paper clips and stuff. Praise God. And, and, and I promise you, it's going to make that reading more productive for you. Also, so often, if you're like me, especially because my day can be arduous and even long, I may get weary and tired and exhausted. And in turn, that's when I'm still challenged to read. So one of the things that I love to encourage people to do is to read out aloud. I promise you, not only are you speaking the word of God into your atmosphere, but it's coming back to you in your hearing. And watch this, faith coming by hearing. So as you speak the word of God, it's coming right back to you to build your faith. So read out aloud. I hope this was a benefit and a blessing to you. I know for some, you might even consider this elementary at best, but we're resetting ourselves spiritually. And this is important to us. And we want to challenge you to take the challenge to get in the word of God. If not for the entire month of November, at least for the first 21 days, starting November 1st, as we fast and pray together, I promise you the spiritual reset is going to leave you in a greater place of being blessed, a greater place of promises being fulfilled. And I want to see you at the end of this race. Can I pray for you before you go? Praise God. You may have a burden, a concern, some situation before you. You may not even have a word, a walk with God, but I believe God right now by the power of his word that he's drawing you ever closer. And so I want to pray for you likewise. Father Lord, I thank you for those that are plugged in, those that have been listening, those that are engaged in the word of God on their own journey. Lord, I pray for those that are uh, perhaps got aloof from the word, but you're being called back now to embrace the word for themselves. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you would allow for them to fall in love with you and your word all over again. Lord, help them to hear your voice. Ah, speak to them loud and clear, Lord, and I thank you right now for it is coming alive, <laughs> oh God, Lord Jesus, unto us. And we're so grateful to be able to embrace the word of God now more today than ever before. Reset us and allow us to embrace your word. Bless the aftermath of what we will do today. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. God bless you. City family, I love you. And there is nothing you can do about it before you go. If you came in at some point in the broadcast, perhaps you fast forward. Um, listen, this is a great time to plant a seed. Don't forget, we are grateful for it. The word of God teaches us to commit to doing so, and we will reap the harvest. God bless you. Love you. And see you soon. Take care.